gun attack on the Saudi embassy in the Netherlands was condemned by Islamic organizations and the international community. Shots were fired at the kingdom's diplomatic mission in The Hague a day after a bomb attack at the World War I Remembrance Service in Jeddah injured at least two people. Security personnel at the embassy informed Dutch security services as soon as the incident occurred and the building was cordoned off. Amid the political quakes currently rocking Turkey, one relatively quiet appointment to a key post could turn out to have a major impact on the country's approach to its decades-long unresolved Kurdish conflict. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan appointed former Interior Minister Efkan Ala as deputy leader of the ruling Justice and Development Party AKP, responsible for the foreign affairs. According to experts, this appointment, if supported by practical reforms, could signal a softer and more reconciliatory tone in Turkey with regard to its Kurdish community. UN human rights experts have demanded access to an abandoned oil tanker off the coast of Yemen that say poses a risk of causing an ecological catastrophe in the Red Sea. The tanker FSO Safer Lines, in waters controlled by the Iran-backed Houthis near the port of Hodeida, where it currently holds an estimated 1.1 million barrels of oil. The ship launched in 1976 is decaying rapidly after being abandoned in 2015 when its engine room flooded with seawater. The UK government has taken three Gulf countries off its mandatory quarantine list, which instructs arrivals to self-isolate for two weeks to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Travelers from UAE, Bahrain and Qatar will no longer have to adhere to the quarantine regulations. Paul Charles, CEO of PC agency Travel Consultants, welcomed the move to ease travel to and from the Arab states, calling it a highly significant decision and a major boost to opening up long-haul travel from the UK again. Jordanian Interior Minister Tawfiq al halalma resigned after a public outcry at gatherings and troubles in the aftermath of the parliamentary elections that breached a five-day national lockdown aimed at curbing the surge in COVID-19 cases, state media said. al halalma said that he took moral responsibility for the unruly events that followed announcements of the results of parliamentary elections held on Tuesday. The government had announced this month it planned the first such lengthy lockdown since easing measures last summer to ensure the polls for a new four-year assembly would not lead to a spike in an already alarming surge in cases. The United Nations Migration Agency said at least 74 migrants died after their Europe-bound ship broke down off the coast of Libya with 47 survivors brought to shore by coast guards and fishermen. The boat was carrying over 120 migrants, including women and children, when it capsized off the coast of the Libyan port of Qamus, said the International Organization for Migration. Only 47 people were rescued by the Libyan coast guard and fishermen and brought to shore. The UN Refugee Agency said about 11,000 people have crossed from Ethiopia to Sudan, fleeing the conflict in their home country, and an estimated 50% of them are children. The UNHCR representative Axel Bishop told reporters that the agency had built a response plan for about 20,000 people. He added that the UNHCR and local authorities have identified one side 70 to 100 kilometers from the border at which to host the influx of refugees and we're working to identify others. The international force that monitors the Israeli-Egyptian peace agreement said that eight peacekeepers, including six Americans, were killed when one of its helicopters crashed during a routine mission in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. A ninth peacekeeper was badly injured. The multinational force and observers said a French peacekeeper and Czech member of the force were also killed. It did not release the names of the dead pending notification of their families. It said the injured peacekeeper was American. The MFO said the helicopter crashed during a routine mission near Sharm el Sheikh, a popular Egyptian resort city on the Red Sea, and that an investigation was underway. 
The U.S. Special Representative for Iran insisted Thursday a pressure campaign of sanctions targeting Iran would persist into the administration of Joe Biden, even as the president-elect has pledged to potentially return America to Tehran's nuclear deal with world powers. Elliot Abrams, who also serves as the U.S. Special Representative to Venezuela, said sanctions targeting Iran for human rights violations, its ballistic missile program, and its regional influence would go on. Iran now has far more uranium than allowed under the deal since President Donald Trump unilaterally withdrew from the accord in 2018. Algerian Prosecutor General of the Criminal Court at the Vlaida Judicial Council, Zuhair Talibi, sought life imprisonment against the main defendant, Abdel Munaim Khalifa, former chief executive director of Khalifa Complex, tried in the Khalifa Bank case. The General Prosecutor's Office also requested the confiscation of all his property. Khalifa and other defendants are prosecuted on charges of a constitution of criminal association, falsification of official documents, and news of forgery, meeting theft, fraud, breach of trust and corruption, falsification of bank documents, and fraudulent bankruptcy. Jordanians elected 130 new representatives, 100 of whom will sit for the first time amid the absence of the most prominent lawmakers and the decline in the number of influential figures. A number of former prominent lawmakers from the Islamic Action Front and Reform Bloc and Together List Man lost the elections, as well as a number of tribal candidates. The results, which were not officially announced, represented a partisan setback as a limited number of their candidates managed to be elected. Despite witnessing a delicate post-election transition period, the U.S. is reaffirming that its interests, lies and policies remain constant and are not affected by change in presidents or ruling parties. Regardless of who is president on January 20th, Washington will continue to work closely with allies to deter hostile activities of common enemies. This was echoed in statements made by U.S. Special Representative for Iran and Venezuela, Elliot Abrams, who concluded a Middle East tour by visiting Saudi capital Riyadh. Malaysia is hoping for improved trade relations with the U.S. when the administration of American President-elect Joe Biden takes office. Following the reporting by major American media outlets of Biden's win in the presidential election, Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin on Sunday said that the Southeast Asian nation was looking forward to its comprehensive partnership with the U.S. continuing to be an overreaching framework for proactive, multifaceted and mutually beneficial collaboration. At least six people have died and ten others are missing after Typhoon Vanku made landfall in the Philippines. More than 180,000 people were evacuated as the typhoon pattered the country, hitting many of the same communities that were devastated by Super Typhoon Guni just 10 days before. Typhoon Vanku, referred to as Olysses in the Philippines, is equivalent in force to a Category 2 hurricane. The World Health Organization and New Centers for Disease Control, CDC, said in a joint report that medicines killed an estimated 207,500 people last year after a decade-long failure to reach optimal vaccination coverage, resulting in the highest number of cases for 23 years. The death toll in 2019 was 50% higher than a historic low reached in 2016, and all WHO regions saw an increase in cases, adding up to a global total of 869,770. This year, there have been fewer cases, but the COVID-19 pandemic has further set back vaccination efforts, with more than 94 million people at risk of missing Wilson's vaccines in 26 countries that have paused their vaccination campaigns, including many countries with ongoing outbreaks. Thank you.